Welcome, Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you for being here and doing this for us. Thank you very much for having me. So this is our eighth grade presentation on Cinco de Mayo and what to expect in high school. Next slide. I am Nancy Gonzalez Huser. I'm one of the counselors at John Muir High School. So I'll give a little plug for my high school, but I really am representing all the high schools um, here. Next slide. So I want to talk about um, the role of the counselor at the, at the high school. And we wear many hats. We are academic record planner, keeper. Uh, we're confidant. We're someone to bounce ideas off of. We're the cheerleaders and you know inspiration for the students. Uh, we often are the recommenders for different programs. We give out program information. Uh, we are the uh, liaison between the teacher and the student or the student and the teacher. We give out grade information. If you have questions about college, career, scholarships, you would come to us. Um, questions about financial aid, questions where you don't know who to ask. You can come ask us. If we don't know the answers, we will um, you know, find it out for you. And I do want you to know that you should meet with a counselor at least once or twice a year. You do not have to wait for the counselor to call you or to make an appointment. You can always meet with a counselor um, if you would like to. Next slide. Now the role of the parent. We expect you to support and encourage your children um, to check the students' grades and progress on the parent portal to have um, the student explain a lesson to you from their day at school to check that they are learning. Uh, we expect that you reach out and you have the students reach out to the teachers for academic questions. Again, we expect you not to wait for someone to reach out to you. We will reach out to you, but you don't have to wait for that. Uh, we expect that all your information is accurate especially your email. And right now during the pandemic, email is how we are getting a hold of you. So it's very important that you check that. We expect that you will check the attendance and ask questions or see if there's problems with it. If your child is being marked absent too many times that you call because we are not gonna call until it is excessive. You know, every now and then we will call because we notice something but for the most part, those routine calls are made when it, when it is excessive. Um, and then we, act, we expect that you will talk to your students, to your children, and you will ask them questions. Now, the next seven slides are a bunch of questions. Okay, we're, we're not going to go through them all. I just want to show you some examples. Um, you know, tell me something uh, about yourself and tell me something that I might want to know. Um, what, are your, what, what, what have your friends been up to? What do you look forward to when you wake up? Hey, hey honey, um, what makes you feel brave? You know, um, if you could give $100 to a charity, which would you choose? Huh, why would you choose that? Dumb little questions like these. Okay, well, they're not dumb. But they are conversation starters because I think as parents, and I'm a parent too, sometimes when you're driving with the kids, right? Just just start talking. Don't let them just listen to their headphones. Go ahead and go to the next slide because we have seven of these. We're not going to go through all of them. So the next one, if you look at these, um, if you wrote a book, what would it be about? One of the most interesting conversations I ever had with a student was we were talking about the different chapters of their life and how would they separate their life into different chapters. And in the future, what chapters would they have in their, in their book? 
Um, that was a really interesting conversation that I've had with, a, with one student and then I moved it on to other students. But, you know, ask them about their friends. What makes your friends so awesome? You know, why, why do you like so-and-so so much? Um, if you had friends all over the world, how would you keep in touch, right? Just, just little questions. Next slide. And these were all from that bottom um, link there. Now these next sets are, are a whole other sets of questions. And I just, you know, got these from the internet. But for some of the younger kids, you know, what, what's your favorite joke? Heck, ask an older person, you know, what's your favorite joke? Um, ask a little tiny kid, what's your favorite joke? You'll, you'll get such interesting answers. But it's really important that you talk to your kids. Uh, next slide. Okay, so very similar questions. Can you remember a time when you had a really good day, right? What motivates you? Okay, so these are really just good questions to ask. Go, let's go to the next one because I think we have quite a few of these. What is one thing you couldn't live without? Would you rather live in a city or a farm? So there's still, some of them are really silly questions, but at least it gets you talking. So I just want you to peruse these, you know, pick three or four that you will ask in the next, you know, two weeks, just when you're talking, just, just uh, when you get into a lull of a conversation and you guys are just sitting there and you're not sure what to say, ask one of these. Next slide, because it's still more questions. I think it was like a hundred questions. And then here's, um, here's the link to these. Um, let's go to the next one. So what you really want to do is you want to encourage an open dialogue. Teens need to know that they can ask questions, test their opinions, and speak freely without fear of consequences. Um, and you can say something like, we may not agree on anything, but I'm interested in what you have to say. Right? Ask open-ended questions um, and support their ideas. Like, what do you think about police brutality? What do you know about it? Who do you think is at fault? Why do you think that? So you can talk about social issues in that way. And when you don't know something, admit that you don't know something, it's okay. As kids move into the teen phase, it's okay for them to see that their parents may not have all the answers. Say, I don't know that. Let's try to find out and then find out with them. Get them to consider the, compl the, the, com the complexities in difficult subjects. Okay, so this is a hard one because this is, you know, social issues, politics, uh, tradition. So you could um, just make sure that, again, you listen to them and when they have questions, you answer. So what makes difficult issues such as rape, violence, and crime so hard to solve? What key things would you need to change to fix certain issues such as poverty, right? Just um, social issues that you can talk about. But also you can throw in questions about sex, about feelings, um, you know, weird situations that might come up with their friends, with them, with families you know. Share your values. Let your kids know where you stand on issues and explain why you hold certain values. Teens or the kids already have a high respect for you, right? So by keeping that conversation open, you can keep that respect. Okay, uh, next slide. Did we go next slide? Yeah. I don't know, having trouble, hang on. Okay. So on the next slide, it's talking about their news, like what is specific to them. Um, luckily, I, I have them all on paper here. Uh, ask, um, 
you know, some of those difficult situations. Teens are trying to figure out their own identities and can seek out risk. Okay, consider how they act if confronted with a terrible reality. So do like what if scenarios with them. And it can be, you know, what if you're at a party and other kids are drinking? What would you do? You know, and then talk through their answers with them. Because some of them will say, well, maybe I, I think I would like to try it, right? Others might say, oh, I would get away from there right away. Others might like, I'm going to call the police. I mean, you know, but talk to the kids about those answers and together find a solution for it. Um, even role play. Role play if people are offering drugs. How do you say no? Uh, how do you go about you know, defending your friend when someone is bullying them. So it's really just important to keep all these conversations going. And what if scenarios are really good? Um, get them to consider solutions. If anything is going to get better, it's this generation who's going to do that. So let them know they also have some power. So we're going to continue with the role of the parent. That was the part where we expect you to talk to your kids. Uh, the next is that we, we expect you to encourage them to participate in school and community. So we have advanced placement and honors classes. That's our first section here. For advanced placement uh, programs, we have AP courses, and they demonstrate more rigor and competitiveness to the colleges. So the colleges see that you are um, showing, you know, more, uh, you're being more competitive. Students receive one extra point towards their GPA. And students may also receive college credit if they perform well on an AP test. Most schools offer these kinds of courses. We have AP World, AP US, AP English Language, AP English Literature, AP Calculus, uh, AP Biology, AP Physics in some schools, AP Environmental Science, AP Spanish, um, maybe even AP Studio Art and AP Psychology. So not all the schools offer these, but most offer at least some of these, right? The, the ones that are kind of maybe not, it may be not the AP Studio Art at all the schools maybe not the AP psychology and maybe not the AP physics. But for the most part, I think you're gonna find the rest at all of the schools. Some of the schools also offer honors courses. Um, some honors classes receive the extra point for GPA, but most do not. Most of the honors classes are just to show that there is more rigor in that class. Uh, there's a program called Fuente. Fuente is a unique program that teams a school counselor, a college level writing class, field trips, and a support team that is committed to maximizing the student's education and to see that he or she graduates from a high school in Pasadena. Now, I think Flair is the only one that opted out of the program, um, but the purpose of the Fuente program is to get students to college. And then uh, some of the math, the honors that I mentioned before, some offer it for uh, math two, just so you're aware. Okay, next slide. Most of the schools have special courses too. So again, this is how you are trying to, um, as a parent, promote uh, participation, right? So the get involved in the school's academy program, right? There's a, um, aerospace engineering, there is business and management, entrepreneurship, engineering and design. These are the courses, possible courses, film and video production, law, computer science, uh, graphic design, etc. And then there's also a lot of electives they, they can choose, ceramics, chorus, graphic design. Have them pick something that they are interested in. Next slide. And then there's tons of special programs. 
so I, I know at John Muir, we have a lot of these, but so do the other schools. There's um, Cal State LA has an outreach program in most of the schools. College access is in most of the, of the schools. Dual enrollment with Pasadena City College. Now that's getting college while you are in high school. So we have that at Muir, but there is concurrent enrollment at the other schools. So you can still uh, enroll at PCC or even Glendale um, and get um, high school and college credit, mainly college credit, get college credit while you are in high school. There's a learned program. There are mentoring groups, as I mentioned, Fuente. There's UCLA, EAOP, Upward Bound, Cal State LA has, um, has a classic program and a math and science program, as well as PCC. Um, there's the VIT scholars. So there's just a lot of special programs at the schools. Next slide. And we want the kids to really get involved, right? So extracurricular activities, baseball, basketball, cross country, any of the sports, you know, but there's also um, activities and clubs, ASB, BSU, journalism, a solar cup, robotics, rotary interact. And then there's leadership opportunities through local businesses and organizations. Um, now, some of these are also internships. So through JPL, through Caltech, through All Art Center, uh, through the Pasadena Unified School District, there's just a lot of um, you know, opportunities available to the students. Uh, next slide. Okay, so I wanna go over now uh, the high school requirements and college entrance requirements and sports requirements. So there are three different um, columns here and they're very small. We're gonna see them in the next slides a little bit bigger. But the first one is the graduation requirements. The second one is the A through G requirements which are the college ones. And the third one is NCAA which are the sports requirements. There are, they are very similar, but there are, you know, little tiny differences that you have to be aware of. So let's go uh, to the first slide, to the next slide, which is the graduation requirements. So for the graduation requirements, uh, students need to have three years of history, four years of English, three years minimum of mathematics, three years minimum of science, two years minimum of physical education, one year minimum of foreign language, one year minimum of visual and performing arts, and then some extra electives to reach the 220. They also have to complete a portfolio presentation and community service hours. Next slide. Now the A through G requirements are very similar to those high school requirements. The only place they differ a little bit is you'll see in the history, it says that two years are required, but the three years that they get in high school would be in this section. And then once uh, one of those classes would go down to the UC approved electives. So having the three at a high grade is still gonna be for college. For English, it's the same. For math, it's the same, except that you always wanna go further, right? Just as I said, three years is what you need, but four is what's recommended. Or if you can have five, that would be even better. Uh, science, now the colleges only require two years of science. PUSD requires three years of science. And I always say go further in math, science and foreign language, because again, you want to be competitive. And here's where the, the graduation requirements, if you only met graduation requirements at a high grade uh, and you only met the minimum, you would not meet the world language requirement for college because the high school graduation requirements are only one year and the college requirements are a minimum of two years. So you really wanna have two, three, or four years of uh, foreign language. 
the visual performing arts is the same. And then the electives are going to be all those extra classes that you take as well. The sports one, I'm not going to go too much into detail. Uh, if we can switch screens to the NCAA, the next one. Uh, but you can still see it's very similar. But the sports one actually requires even a little more. So whenever a student is planning to play sports in college, it's very important that they talk that they tell their counselor right from the beginning, because you have to make sure that your GPA stays high and also that you take all those extra courses. So that extra course of math, science, and foreign language are all going to be required here. It's not going to be, um, you know, that you choose to take them. It's that you need to in order to meet eligibility. Next screen. So you should see them here again, all side by side, just so you can see that they are very similar. And a counselor is going to be looking out for you. They're going to be, you know, checking that you meet, especially the first two uh, columns, the, the graduation requirements and the A through G. It's very important. Again, if you need that sports, uh, then you will tell your counselor so that they look out for you. Next screen. There are 40 hours of... Um, service hours that are required for graduation. So it's uh, important that students are aware that they can look up hours. And I put the John Muir information on here on just different possibilities. And then if students do do any kind of service, whether it's programs, workshops, you know, volunteer, that they list the organization, the date, from what time to what time, what that activity was, and then um, the supervisor for that, the name and the email. They should have this on a spreadsheet and keep it all four years uh, because they are gonna need that later on. They're gonna need it one to show these service hours and they should be turning it as they are doing them so they get added. Uh, but also when it comes to scholarships, they're gonna be asking about that information. And as um, eighth graders right now, this, the senior defense is just something that we want them to be aware of. The senior defense is a project that they will complete their senior year. It consists of a reflection paper that where they write and they demonstrate how they have grown as an individual from the ninth grade to the 12th grade. They give examples of this growth through assignments that they have completed. Um, the reflection must, must include a minimum of two pieces which is a creative piece and a research piece. But I always tell the kids include way more. In fact, from the ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th grade, be thinking about which assignments have really made you think, which assignments have been difficult and challenged you. Um, and if they have, then they're probably assignments that have made you grow as an individual. So now you can reflect upon them when you're in the 12th grade and if you already put them in a folder, it's going to make it that much easier. Um, next slide. Uh, I want parents and students to be aware of the awards that um, students may receive and that they keep a running record and they use these categories on how to um, organize their like activities sheet or brag sheet or even resume. And the reason I use these categories is because the National Honor Society will use these categories. The UCs, that's the University of California, will use these categories. So if they already have it in these categories, it's going to make it that much easier for them. Next slide. And once they have these activity sheets, they can, you know, apply for different types of awards. So there are service awards, there are biliteracy awards, um, California Scholarship Federation. Each academy gives its award, uh, sometimes like Fuente, Upward Bound, Talent Search, MPYD, they give awards. Uh, sometimes uh, CAP, I know sometimes we give out certificates. So there are different awards that are available to students and they are mainly based on grades, service, 
and participation. Now I wanna talk about the PUSD high school academies. So Blair High School has a health academy, an international baccalaureate program, and an Armenian dual language program. Now the second, the last two of that one aren't really academies, but we still categorize them. They are programs that are at those schools. Marshall has the Academy for Creative Industries. John Muir High School has the Arts, Entertainment, and Media Academy, the Business and Entrepreneurship Academy, and the Engineering and Environmental Science Academy. And then Pasadena High School has the Computer Applications Academy, the Creative Arts, Media, and Design Academy, and the Law and Public Service Academy. So there's a lot of um, specialties that you can see in our different high schools. Uh, I want you to be aware of open enrollment, but at this point, I believe it is too late. So whatever your school of attendance is, or if you already got a permit, then that would be the school that your student will be attending. Um, there is an open enrollment period, but it runs uh, from January 7th to January 28th. And the second one uh, was in March. So I'm, I'm, that's the only, the only information I have for open enrollment. Okay, now for eighth grade scheduling. Um, Muir and, PH, and PHS will be sending out a survey to the students and parents in their attendance zones and to students with permits. So at this point, you should have already received that survey from Muir and PHS if that is the school you are attending. Um, if you have not received the survey, then it should be on the school's website. And tomorrow morning, I will make sure it is on our website because I don't think it is on our website yet. But on this survey, uh, students can pick an academy, they can pick their classes to a certain extent, and they will have a link for the email addresses and the appointment sites. And that's really important um, because if you fill out the survey and then there was something you were uncertain about, then you know, email the counselor at that school and say, I filled out the survey, this is what I wrote, but this is what I really meant. And there was no option for that. Um, now the Blair and Marshall is interesting because they already have uh, sixth, seventh and eighth grade at their schools. So most of their um, turnover is within their schools. And if you received a permit for that school, then that letter should tell you how to go about uh, meeting with those counselors. Next, I do want you to be aware of all the opportunities that are available to students. So I just told you about the different high schools but I want you to think about all the different colleges that there are. So in California alone, we have over 200 opportunities for kids. We have 10 UCs, which are the University of California. We have 23 CSUs, which are the California State Universities. We have 113 community colleges, and then we have 81 private and independent colleges. And we also have trade schools, um, and uh, yeah, trade schools. Now, those are all in state in California. Now, out of state, you have all that in every other state. Well, maybe not to that extent, but there's out of state private, you know, colleges, public colleges and universities. There are 105 historically black colleges and universities. Those are called HBCUs and you do not have to be black to attend those colleges and universities. Um, but most of those are out of state. So um, in fact, all of those are out of state. I want you to be aware of that. Next uh, slide. Now we have opportunities and I mentioned this a little bit before um, for students to take college courses while they are in high school. There's something called dual enrollment and concurrent enrollment. And both are college courses, okay? It's just the, the way that it is presented. Dual enrollment is held during the school hours on the high school campus. Concurrent enrollment is held 
at PCC during their hours and on the PCC campuses. Keeping in mind that PCC campuses can be the main campus and can be the satellite campuses that they have like down at Rosemead or on Muir High School's campus. And those are excellent opportunities. Um, there's also, here's the contact information for each school in case you need that. And on the next slide, you have my uh, contact information. But I, I, I do want you to know that, um, you know, we are starting to schedule the eighth graders and we're doing it based on those surveys for, for Muir and for PHS, we're doing it based on the surveys. For Marshall and Blair, it's based on probably either email communication or um, maybe phone calls, maybe video calls that you've had with, with the schools. But I just want the parents and the students to know that the eighth grade grades will count as to how we place kids in. But if a kid did poorly, they can really have a fresh start in high school. And if they did wonderfully, then they should continue that. And then they, they can, you know, even uh, make that better. But the ninth grade grades will start their high school career. The ninth grade grades will be counted in their overall GPA ninth through 12. This is what we will base scholarships on. Um, this is what we base awards on. Uh, colleges, we'll see the classes they take for ninth grade and make sure that they pass them with a passing grade. The ninth grade classes and the grades in those classes will determine what kind of classes you will take in the 10th grade. So it's very important to take the ninth grade and all of high school seriously. And if they are taking any college classes to understand that's gonna affect their high school and their college career. We have a lot of ninth graders who right now were failing the college class and we, we had to make them realize this is a college class. It will go onto your college transcript. If you do not do well in it, you will have to take it over because that's gonna start you off poorly in college. So you don't want that to happen. Um, so I just want people to be aware you know, how important those grades are for the students. But again, if a student ends up doing really poorly, talk to the counselor so we can try to make those grades up because we always try to have a safety net. You know, if, if you're doing great, fabulous, wonderful. We're gonna keep you, you know, at, at this ongoing level. But if you fall and, and you need the help, we're there to help you as well. Yay, that was it. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez. Um, does anybody have any questions? Please feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question. I have a question. Yes. If, as you said, Dr. Gonzalez, if a student is struggling, and we reach out to a counselor, what are some of the supports that might be available on campus for that student? So first and forth, foremost, um, the student should always talk to the teacher, find out what is going on. Um, if the student does not have success with talking to the teacher, then the student should come see me so that I can go talk to the teacher. Um, and sometimes I do understand that students get dismissed like, I already said that I'm not, you know, like, I know that happens. Um, so, so I am there to help with that teacher uh, communication. But let's say that that has happened and we know exactly what the student needs to do, but the student just needs help with the subject. At that point, there are, um, there is tutoring, right? So there is something called paper.co, which is an online tutoring that is new this year. And a lot of my students have really found success with it. Uh, there is also just uh, going to the teacher after school, meeting with the teacher and figuring out, you know, what exactly needs to be done. Sometimes some of the problem is just sitting down and figuring out which assignments need to be completed, you know, um, because they don't have clarity on it. 
And sometimes they're too embarrassed to go to someone because maybe they talked to the teacher and the teacher explained it, but the teacher explained it really quickly and they didn't quite get it. So again, I am there to help with that. Um, this year, actually a few years back, we started with the program called Set More and it's how uh, students can make appointments with us. So they don't have to go back and forth as to, oh, are you free on this day? Oh, are you free at this time? Um, you know, and now with, with the video calling, you know, it makes it even easier because they don't even, if, if they're at home, they, they can quickly, you know, contact us. Um, but the tutoring that we usually have after school is available, uh, talking to the teachers and um, getting extra help with the teachers, the paper.co. Um, so what if a student is having, for example, like this year, mental health issues or family issues or whatever, um, who would they see or where would you send them? So for the most part, most of the, well, I'm not going to say most, all of the high schools are partnered with different organizations. At Muir, we have uh, DeVille Services, and we also have a wellness center. Uh, at PHS, I believe uh, they have somewhat of a wellness center, and they are partnered maybe with Foothill Family Services. I'm not certain about that one, but they are, every school is partnered uh, with an organization where kids can get that therapeutic help, right? Not just a one-time kind of pep talk from me, but where they can get on ongoing therapeutic help. Thanks. Certainly. And also with kids that have private insurance, I have even gone as far as to say, okay, you know, um, let's, let's call Kaiser and let's make you an appointment. And, you know, because sometimes the organizations can't help them directly, like they can help them once or twice, but they can't go ongoing because if, if uh, they have their own private insurance, it has to be through their private insurance. Do we have any more questions for Dr. Gonzalez? I, I just looked on the chat and I think there are some on the chat. Um, I, I, don't, I can't control it, I don't think. Let me see. Um, I had asked in the chat whether the paper tutoring is still going to be available to PUSD students next year. I, I know that was instituted during the remote learning. Is that something that they expect will, will still be available? As far as I know, yes. Paper.co should, should continue. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez, for a great presentation. If we do not have any more questions, we will proceed with our agenda. And uh, along the line of um, uh, college and career, we have our CAP partners. Wendy is here tonight to present the information. Go ahead, Wendy. Good evening. Good evening. How is everyone doing? It's still so weird to kind of talk into a screen and not hear laughter or hellos, but I know that they're there. Uh, yay! Okay, I could I could see some faces. I could see some faces. I'm gonna yay! I'm gonna share my screen, but I just want to share. I was the first in my family to go to college, um, and everything I know now as a professional, I did not know when I needed to know it. Um, and so, one of the things that I really appreciate about PUSD is the wealth of resources that um, are offered and are available to families and students. So please take advantage of that. Um, I know sometimes parents and students don't think that they need any help until like junior and senior year, but find out like Penn is here, Young and Healthy, EAOP, Upward Bound, um, Puente Project, and CAP obviously is one of them. So please, please, please uh, come by and visit us. So let me... It says, um, I can't share my screen. Okay, well, I, I mean, 
I can just sort of talk this way. Um, CAP's been around, this is our 15th year, so it's kind of like a quinceanera. Uh, we started off with <laughs> one Muir High School teacher, one student and one PCC professor who was um, Mo Hyman, our executive director. And it's grown to over 1600 students. Um, so now we're at all of the middle schools, all of the high schools. And we also have a special program called the iHeart College, which is a little smaller and is by invitation only. But because we know that getting into college is actually the easy part, the harder part, is graduating from college, right? So that's what iHeart College um, helps students get into and through college. But what we want to really focus on what's available for your students um, once they get to high school is um, CAP is here to help with anything and everything related to college. If they wanna start a college list, right? Um, the district has made it so that every single middle schooler and high schooler has a CCGI account. Students can start exploring their colleges, building a college list, looking into possible careers. We can help them with researching scholarships, right? It's never too early to start looking into scholarship opportunities. I like to do this practice with my students, even in middle school. Let's see what's out there. What are your interests? What do you like? Some of them are like, I like sports. Some of them, I like robotics. So we research different scholarship opportunities that are available so they can see, oh, wow, in four years, this scholarship is going to be one that I want to apply to, and it's going to ask for two letters of recommendation. So that puts in their head, hey, Building that relationship, like uh, Dr. Gonzalez was saying, is so important with your counselor, with teachers, right? Building that rapport early on so that teachers get to know a student on a personal level. Um, again, we're here with anything college related. So it could be college essays, right? We know that it's really hard for students to write about themselves. Sometimes they have to do an interview. Um, and the first draft is never the final draft. And that's a sometimes something that students have to learn the hard way. So we definitely encourage come drop by. We're completely free. We're open to any and every student who wants our help. So whether the student has a 2.0 or a 4.5 GPA, we really just meet the student where they're at. Are there any questions for CAP? And we don't have an application process. So I think that's one of the different things. Yes, Laura. So how do you guys feel about a parent coming to meet with you because a kid is not quite ready yet but a parent has questions where do you stand on that yeah so, we actually, yeah, so um we actually have four different departments we have the middle school high school iheart college and then we have a, a parent and family engagement so natasha um, the program manager for the parent and family engagement and i Work, we facilitate parent workshops and we also welcome if parents want to make an appointment or participate in any of the workshops and get questions answered that way and if they need any kind of follow-up we're happy to do that okay yeah you can't come in you cannot do high school drop-in as a parent for your student but you can certainly come to us and then sometimes it just takes like a, a sort of a casual meeting between the parent the student and one of us and then sort of like a hand warm off to the high school program coordinator. So we, Thank so we you. Welcome that. We welcome that. Because some students may not be quite thinking about things yet and may think that the parents are overreacting by starting too soon. I'm just saying. <laughs> it could happen. Right. It's the can. It's the can. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I don't see any questions in the chat, so. Any more questions for Kat? Oh, sorry, one more. The CCGI account, how is that found? Do okay. students know about that? So I know that we've incorporated it into every single presentation that we've done. We always have a slide, any middle school presentation that we do. I know that the high school team also includes CCGI, but I'll throw it in the um, chat. I'll throw the link. It's really easy. They just need to go to register. Um, and then the student will just put in their name. They, they have to say, I am a student, pick the district, pick the school, and then they put their student ID and they want to enter. They're always tempted to just say like, sign in with Google. No, they want to put their PUSD email because that's what's going to link the student to the district. Okay, thank yeah. you, all right. And the same thing with the parent, they just go, I am a parent, and then the school, the, dis the district, the school, and then the student information, and then their information. And all the parent needs is a name um, and email. 
Okay. Let me Thank you. That. Yeah, while we move on to the next one. Thank you so much, Wendy. Great information. And now we have our partners from Penn, uh, Pasadena Education Network, and they also uh, will share their uh, services and supports uh, to our families, especially during this transition time. Uh, thank you, Laura and uh, Susan for being here. Take it away. Okay. Um, <clears throat> hi, my name is Susan Schwartz, and I am the program director for Pasadena Education Network, penfamilies.org. Um, <clears throat> we're an independent grassroots nonprofit organization that promotes family participation in public education for the benefit of all students um, in, the, in the communities served by Pasadena Unified. Um, and we connect about 2,000 families with who either have students enrolled in PUSD schools now all across the district or who are considering PUSD schools for their children. So we have some programs we do, some services, uh, a lot of resources on our website to help parents explore their school options, um, you know, think about, connect with families who have kids at those schools, uh, connect with who they need to connect with at the school district, and then to engage effectively with their schools and the school community. And then obviously we partner with PUSD's Amazing Family Resource Center with CAP and the other district parent organizations and councils to you know, just support wherever we can. And a lot of times what we do um, is really um, a lot of parent to parent sort of stuff. So I think that um, like with this presentation, uh, you had a really lots of information um, from, a, from a high school counselor. Uh, we are actually doing a follow-up program next, not next week, two weeks from now. Um, I'll put that uh, information in the chat. Let's see, I think I got that all there. So uh, we're doing a Hello High School program on Tuesday, May 18th. And uh, our focus will be more on sort of what does it look like for a parent? So, you know, our role in supporting our students and helping them be successful changes as they get older and um, become more independent. Um, and, you know, fortunately, by the time they get to high school, there are a lot of other resources. There's CAP, there are the, the high school counselors, but it's sort of our, our focus and, and the program that we'll do on the 18th will be just sort of the complement to this information sort of on the other hand, you know, on the home side of things, what are you doing as a parent to help, uh, help your student develop the skills and habits that they need and, um, you know, be, make that appointment with the counselor, how to, how to do that, how to, we're, you're sort of pushing from the other end, as it were. Um, and we have a link uh, here to our uh, calendar page, which has the, uh, you can sign up for this program if you're interested. Um, and I don't know, Laura, do you have anything else to add? Sorry. Uh, no, not at this point, just, you know, I, it, it helps for us to it helps that we, you know, that we've been parents in the district. I am a parent currently in the district. So um, I learn things as I go and, you know, it's, I share uh, with other parents uh, and our angle is always to provide that peer to peer learning. And so our programs, you know, often have someone from the staff, uh, but ideally it's someone from the staff who is also a parent in the district. And we also have other parents um, just to provide that kind of parent perspective. Um, so um, just, I appreciate this program. I, I got some of my questions answered uh, so that I can be prepared for our complimentary program. Um, I think um, that's I all just, I had. Great. I just saw a question in the chat about whether there will be any in-person high school tours before the school year ends uh, or possibly during the summer. Now I know um, I heard that Dr. Gray at Muir said that you could email him and set up an in, you know, one family uh, in-person tour of the school. Can you confirm that, Dr. I'm not sure about that, but that sounds like something he would do. So <laughs> even if he has said that, if you email him, I'm sure he will. He'll probably come in on a Saturday to do it. So. Right, yeah, I, right. So, you know, you may not, um, whether you'll be able to see the school when student, when it's in session or, or whether you would need to come during a time when there's nobody else there just because of, Oh, I think it would have to be when yeah. you're not there. Yeah, and and it may be. I mean, beyond that, I, I it's kind of hard to say about the in person. I think that um, 
you know, obviously once, uh, you know, mid June comes and things are, there's, there's a little bit more opening up. Um, if all goes well, there may be some opportunities. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that there's, um, there are going to be a lot of opportunities to get on campus before school starts. Usually schools have some things right, you know, in the, in the week or two before uh, school starts in the fall where you can kind of, you know, actually meet some other families and come on campus. And we'll just sort of have to see what the, what the social distancing situation looks like. Maybe it won't be a problem. I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah. In the a meantime, lot of schools also have uh, have virtual tours, and on our webpage um, under school under the schools tab, if you go down to tours, we have links to uh, virtual tours that various schools have. So not all the schools have that, but but some do. Also, um, if you already know where your child will be going, uh, look for their Facebook page um, and go to their website, and it it may be that they're uh, putting updates there. Um, so I recommend that. Um, also, for any parents that are thinking of coming to the PEN program, if you have questions that you would like answered at that program, uh, go ahead and did you put something there, Susan, so that they could email? Yeah, I, I put the, the link to the, I'll put it in. Oh, right, to the registration form. And there's a place on the registration form where you can put in any um, questions that you have. We also, on our, another resource that we have on our website under schools is called Talk to a Parent. So we have uh, actual parents who are currently enrolled at, at the various schools um, who are willing to be sort of a point of contact. Obviously, you know, if there's a PTA meeting that, that's happening with, at the school site, that's another way to kind of sneak in and, and, and make some connections. And maybe through that, make some connections, you know, help your kids make some connections with other, other families' kids. So. Um, that is sort of one of the things that we try to do is just sort of facilitate that connecting people with, with schools, with other families who go to the schools. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Laura. Uh, like you, like um, Wendy said, what a way of gathering all the information and supporting our families. I think this really shows uh, all the support that we have at PUSD. Thank you. Thank you, our partners. Thank you to uh, Dr. Gonzalez for making this possible. And uh, I posted our uh, link to the Canvas page. We will be posting this presentation there. Therefore, you will be able to share it because uh, some parents might not be here today, but we know that they come back to the Canvas page and they look at recordings at um, archives. Uh, we also posted the evaluation. Please fill that out because that is the way that we can improve our services and also add more topics depending on the need. Um, we also um, added our contact information. Our family engagement office is there to support you with additional resources, presentations, anything that you might need us to uh, support you with. Uh, that's our contact information. And yes, I do recommend to check uh, every uh, PUSD school's uh, website because that is the way that you will look at updates and see if any tours or any virtual tours are available. So please check that out so that way you can become familiar with your school site. And again, during the summer, we might have additional uh, support and resources for all of our amazing families that are transitioning to new schools. Thank you so much uh, to everyone for, uh, for being here tonight. If we do not have any more questions, uh, we can stop the recording and the presentation. Again, thank you to our presenters.